Well, thank you so much for joining me. In this four-part video series, we're gonna walk through the steps uh, showing you how to make a map like this, like this kind of thing, this map. This map appears as uh, an introduction to a chapter in GIS for Science Volume 3. Check it out. Let's get started. We're gonna work on weird bathymetry and delve into some 3D in this phase. Get ready to live. Oh, and all of the data I'll use is available in the link in the description. This is an extract of the Gebco World Bathymetry. It happens to be showing a portion of the Pacific Ocean that includes the Salas Ridge and the Gomez Ridge. These are both undersea mountain ranges, which is awesome. We're gonna make a bathymetric map. Now by default, the bathymetry will be rendered as black to white and in this case, it's been given a standard deviation stretch with two standard deviations in order to boost contrast by default. I want to smooth this out just a little bit. So I'm going to add a couple standard deviations to this to make it a smoother rendering. Four standard deviations. Now instead of that black to white default, I'll open my color scheme editor and I'll leave this as white and I'll set this to dark brown color. I think it's called burnt umber. Very Bob Ross kind of color name. The result is something that looks more like a muddy seafloor, which is exactly what I'm going for. Now I want to add a little bit of hill shade to this to really boost the fact that these are mountains blasting up from the surface of the seafloor. And I'm going to, in the imagery tab, open the raster functions. Within the raster functions, down at the bottom, there's a group called surface. I'll choose hill shade and I'll point it to my bathymetry image. And I'm gonna make this fake sun altitude very low in the sky. And I'll create a new layer. And now we have a grayscale hill shade. How do I blend these two together? Blend, magic word. With this layer selected, I'm gonna go into the appearance tab and there's a glorious category of effects called blend modes. The layer blend right now is normal, which means it just shows up on top of whatever's underneath it. But I wanna mathematically stitch these together, informing the light and the dark with the colors of my elevation. So instead of normal, I'm gonna choose hard light. Now we have something that is driven by elevation, darker to lighter, but also informed by an artificial hill shade. And now I want to give this a sense of wateriness. And I'll select my original bathymetric layer. And with the control key pressed, check this out, control, drag. I can make a copy. And I'll open this color scheme. And instead of a fully opaque solid color scheme, I'll give this a deep, dark navy and it'll transition to this bright green color which I'm going to make fully transparent at sea level so it looks like it's getting deeper and harder to see through the water let's see what this looks like I like how this looks and I like it a lot now I want to make this 3d because I want these mountains to really pop you can in the view tab convert any 2d map very quickly and easily to a two and a half D local scene or a fully 3d global scene let's do global now I've got a 3D map of my undersea area. By default, we're using this world elevation service and it doesn't have bathymetric information in it. What do we do? Well, once again, I'm going to hit the control key and drag a copy of this original bathymetry. And I'm going to pull this all the way down into my elevation services and turn off this world elevation service. So now the elevation is driven by my bathymetric image. Now by default, it's showing the true elevation. But if I go to appearance, I can apply a vertical exaggeration. I'm gonna say 15 times vertical exaggeration to really showcase the fact that this is a dynamic seafloor rising and falling. Isn't that interesting? Now, I want to create a layout where I can start building up my map. With the Insert tab, I'll choose New Layout. And for its size, I'll choose a custom page size. Now I want this to fit a computer's monitor. So I'll change this to Points, and I'll set it to 1920 by 1080. And at least the aspect ratio will be the same as most monitors. So here's my layout. I'll insert my map and draw an extent. 
Now I have a map of the seafloor of the Salas and Gomez Ridge. If I right click this, I can activate it and fine tune its position. I can right click and adjust the scale. I can click my scroll wheel and adjust the full 3D pitch of my view and center this into the composition. Well, that was fun, right? Jump on over to part two where we're going to build an overview globe and pull in a glassy north arrow using styles. I'll see you there.